Um, wholesaling real estate is the same thing as maybe playing video games for a lot of you guys thinking about it. You think to yourself, hey, wouldn't it be so cool to be like Michael Jordan doing what I love or being like Ninja Twitch streamer playing video games? Making $20,000 on a wholesaling deal is my video game. I don't think I work at all. I literally just play a game. The game is business. It's mm. the greatest sport on earth. And that's what I do. I wake up every single day ecstatic and happy. Um, I got full of energy because I just love what I'm doing. You can do the same thing as business. I promise you, you have a passion for wholesaling once you get your first deal and you figure out how fun it is. Uh, so really, that's it, man. Life is short. Do what you enjoy. Change your life forever. If you just spend one year dedicating to wholesaling, and if you work hard enough, you will get your first deal. Remember, it's one year for the rest of your life you can do to change your trajectory of everything. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. And today we have another special guest. We're going to talk to the younger crowd today. Recently, I've been getting a lot of people contacting me on my uh, YouTube page asking if uh, they can get started or if they can even buy a house at 17 years old. And I've had a couple of 18 year olds contact me saying, hey, I don't really have a lot of money. How should I start the real estate investing business? So I thought, the best thing for me to do is to get the best guy that I know to talk to you, younger generation, the younger crowd, about how he got started at 17 years old in the real estate investing business. So that's really what I want to cover today on, on this podcast. And Zach is, what, what are you, 21 now, Zach? 21 years old. 21 years old. And you started when you were 17 and, you know, you're going to answer, uh, you know, you're obviously the proof that's in the pudding when it comes to uh, real estate investing at a really young age. A lot of people wonder, hey, how can I get started? How should I get started? I want to talk to that generation today and I want to provide some real quality information for that younger crowd to get started as real estate investors. I started when I was 21. So it was a little different. I was old enough to purchase a property. So we're going to talk about some of the ins and outs of how Zach started when he was in high school and uh, was able to make money uh, during his uh, 17th year on this planet and how you guys can copy Zach and get in touch with him so that you can uh, start your real estate investing business as well. Zach, again, what's up, man? What's up? How's it going, Jamel? I'm doing great, man. Hey, I know you very well, man. Um, you know, we've been in touch for a little over a year now, I want to say. And, you know, I know your dad really well. And you guys are, you know, we, we've done some things together in the past. I plan on doing a lot more with you guys. But our listeners may not know who you are. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, man? Yeah, so guys, I'm Zach Ginn. Um, half of uh, Flip with Rick, which is basically a YouTube uh, channel that we got going where I just teach people real estate kind of like you. But um, the difference between me and most other guys is I started 17 years old, basically four years ago. I told myself I'm going to quit my bad boy job. I, I can tell you my story later, but I basically went from broke to making $100,000 before I graduated high school in wholesaling and profit. Big difference there is profit. And it started scaling up. And now I run basically the largest wholesaling operation in my market. Now I'm not in like Charlotte, North Carolina, the top guy there, but like I'm in a smaller part, but I'm doing really well doing it. And I just love sharing my story. How many 17 year olds can say that they, they've made a hundred thousand dollars during their senior year in high school, man? Not, well, probably no one except you, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say my friends thought I was crazy or they thought I did well, but I didn't tell them anything because you know, money, uh, money makes things a little different around people. But um, ever since I started sharing my story, a lot of the people, family members, uh, they asked like, Zach, are you doing something illegal? Are you selling drugs? How are you doing all this? <laughs> like, hey, that's the number one thing most young people don't understand. They think wholesaling is illegal. You literally, the, this sucks, but you go to your local realtor and say, hey, I want to start wholesaling. They will tell you it's illegal and they'll throw you in jail just to stop you from doing it. It's happened so many times. Um, so guys, don't get discouraged in this business. Yeah, man. You know, I had someone, you know, about two weeks ago, tell me that wholesaling was illegal. And this was on a deal that we were actually closing. 
And it was funny because another uh, investor friend of mine, she used to be a student. She had the same exact thing happen to her last week. So it's almost like these uh, uh, realtors and, and some attorneys who don't understand real estate investing, they're, start, they're trying to crack down on uh, wholesaling, but it's not going to happen because it's totally legit. You know what I mean? So um, just to kind of flip the script a little bit, man, let me ask you a couple, let me, let me ask you this. So if we're talking to our 17 year olds and our 18 year olds listening to this podcast right now, um, why don't you tell them how you got started in the business and how they can get started as well? Yeah. So the hardest part is always, I mean, I, I think you can vouch for this is getting your first deal. Once you get your first deal, the rest just, I mean, almost flows even better. It's just compound interest. You learn about money, you get there. But I'll tell you my story. I basically, I'll bring it all the way back four years ago. I was a 17 year old kid in high school. Uh, throughout high school, I was huge into uh, wrestling. I was captain of my wrestling team. I humbly say I was, think I was pretty good at it. And uh, that's basically all I cared about. Uh, I mean, it was wrestling, girls, and that was basically it. That, that's all I cared about. And I just decided I needed to get some money, uh, you know, to go to my high school wrestling tournaments. I got a car and basically started a bag boy job when I was 14 years old. Uh, so three years in the job, I was working minimum wage. I got one raise for 25 cents. And that was what my time was worth, worth back then, apparently what the manager thought it was. Uh, so I was just scrubbing toilets and bagging groceries. And I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I was in high school full time, uh, taking college classes called dual enrollment. So I had like maybe three hours of school a week, actually three hours about a day, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so basically there's a bag boy just scrubbing toilets. I remember one day um, there was, I don't get too graphic on you, but there was a feces on a toilet and my manager said I had to go clean it up or I was fired. And I basically made a decision to myself that I'm never going to like stoop this low. Um, I just felt, I don't know, my ego is just down. Um, I felt terrible what I was doing and I just thought I could do better even at 17. Uh, so I decided I came home that one day and I went across, um, just pet my dog or something. And on my dad's uh, office, he had a check for about 20, I think $20,000 for a wholesale fee he made. And I was like, wow, that is more than like a bad boy makes in like two years. Like, oh my God, like, how do I do this? And I always knew my dad was into real estate, but I didn't know a thing he did. I mean, I, mean, I thought he was probably a realtor half the time. So I didn't know what he did. I just knew he made a decent amount of money and um, we're doing good. So I basically came to the next day. Yeah. <laughs> you, said a, you said a decent amount of money. You're yeah, right. You're being modest, man. <laughs> I mean, it's a decent amount of money. I, I mean, I, I see wholesalers making $5 million a year in profit. So no, I, honestly, it does very well, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not making $5 million a year, but I mean, I it's the largest operation we are at. But um, fast forward, I basically talked to him the next day, intervention style. I said, Dad, you need to teach me how to do what you do. Like, how do I make $20,000 like in a day or a week? Like, how do I do this? And he was like, you really want to learn how to do uh, what I do? I'm like, yeah, what is it? He's like, well, it's wholesaling. I'm like, teach me how to do it. Like, I want to do it. Teach me, teach me. And uh, let, let me uh, learn the ropes from you. Just, you know, piggyback off of what you do and show me everything. And he said, you really want to do this? I said, yeah. He's like, you want it bad enough? I'm like, of course I do. Of course I do. And he said, okay, um, just figure out by yourself and, uh, if you want it bad enough, you'll, you'll do it yourself. And that just demoralized me like crazy. I was like, oh my God, he's not going to give me everything. And I didn't understand what he was doing. He got me upset. Like he had the keys to the kingdom. He could have literally taught me all this. And he's just like, no, if you want it bad enough, do it yourself. So um, hindsight's 2020. I, it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me because experience is the best teacher. Um, theoretically burn the ships. So if something bad happened, I can't go back to my dad to help me out with something. So um, still worked my bag board job because I had cars and stuff I, I had to pay for. So I um, started scrubbing toilets still and I decided I needed to learn this wholesaling stuff. So I went on YouTube, honestly didn't know what to search for. And back then, actually four years ago, YouTube for wholesaling sucked. It was absolutely terrible. It was a bunch of just like bigger pockets guys that never explained anything. It wasn't that good. Um, I'm, Fortunately for me, I went to my dad's uh, office. I stole about 10 wholesaling books he had in there. And I started religiously reading about a book a day, which is like 100 pages. I got some right here. They're, they're, they're long. And I decided to myself, I said, okay, Zach, I got 300 bucks in my bank account. And I make about $100 a week. 
what am I going to do to get a, for my first wholesaling deal? I saw it. I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, but is this real? Like, I, I didn't know. So I figured out that my only options were really just to knock on people's doors or stick those we buy houses signs outside. Uh, what I did was I decided I needed to get some bandit signs. So I went to uh, the local sign guy, paid $2 a sign. I didn't even know if that was a ripoff or not, just paid $2 a sign. And so I basically spent all of my money on bandit signs and stakes. Uh, so I knew uh, Sharpie basically my personal phone number on there. Said we buy houses cash. And the only difference I did was I put a dollar sign with yes. And then I stuck them out um, during my high school wrestling tournaments on Saturdays. Fortunate for me, my high school wrestling tournaments, uh, the high schools that I went to for the wrestling tournaments, they were literally in the hottest zip codes possible because those high schools were in population centers with like working class. And I just stuck them around the high school and it was perfect because high, the high schools here in Florida are right by major intersections and stuff. So I just magically stuck like 20 out until I hit my 150. And um, long story short, I didn't know what I was doing, but I got, I got a bunch of like bad phone calls and then about a week later, I got my first actual motivated seller who called me. I uh, told me, hey, I just lost my job. I'm actually relocating up north. I'm an engineer. I need to get rid of this property. And I said, okay, can I meet you like today? And he said, yeah, can you come by at like one o'clock or something? And I said, sure. Uh, again, that was during my college class. Like I got that phone call and I just ran out of the thing and I got kicked out of class for answering my call. But uh, I went out there, answered it, and I went I went home straight home at like 12 o'clock, and I was getting everything ready. I didn't know what to do. I searched wholesaling real estate uh, contract, just found the first one I found, and I got ready. I was like, I was so excited. I was like, I'm going to get a deal. Uh, so basically, I was running out, and my dad's like, what, what are you doing? Like, look all frantic. What's going on? And he's like, I'm, I'm going to my first appointment. I'm going to go get a wholesale deal. He's like, you know you can't do that, right? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, let me go out there and sign this contract. He's like, you're 17 years old. You can't sign a contract legally. Like you won't be able to assign it. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I, I looked it up real quick. I'm like, oh no, I did. I, I, I spent all my money on marketing and now I can't wholesale. He's like, you know what? Let, let me do you a favor. You might, you're probably going to mess up on this appointment. And it seems like it's an actual motivated seller and you're probably going to screw it up. So let me go with you. I'll sign the contract with you. If you screw it up, I'm just going to get the deal myself. Uh, but it, there's too much money on the line here. So he went with me uh, and basically I, I went there and then my dad was behind me and I'm like, dad, you're going to knock on it. He's like, no, you, I'm quiet. So it was really awkward, but I basically knocked on the guy's door. He's like, who is this? I'm like, oh, this is my dad, uh, Rick. And he's just like, and my dad's like, hi. Like you didn't say a thing friendly, just complete monk mute. And I basically talked to the guy, looked around the house. Um, sorry, this is long, but this is my whole story. But basically went there. And the house was completely decrepit. It was terrible. The flooring is all messed up. There was brown, brown spots on the ceiling, which I didn't know what that was. I thought that was paint. Money. That means money. I didn't know <laughs> anything about real estate. I was a bad boy. Uh, I knew groceries. So I didn't know what, I didn't know a thing about the house. There were stucco cracks outside. I, I looked at the pictures back and I'm like, wow, I could have really got a good deal on this. But basically I went there and I said, hey, how much do you need to sell this property for? Because that's the only thing I knew was, Zach, don't say the price first. That's the only thing these gurus are telling me on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and so he basically said, you know, I really need to get rid. Actually, so the property I could sell to a cash buyer all day at like, I would say like 85, 80 grand. Uh, so what was it? Yeah, I think about 80, 80 grand is what you could sell with to a cash buyer for. So he said, hey, how much do you need to sell this property for? And he said, about 60,000 what I need out of it so I can move. And I was screaming inside. I was like, what? 60,000? Oh my God. I was, I was like, I was like, oh my, like I was shaking inside. I was like, um, can, I can't do that. I was like, I really need 55,000. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And so we signed it for $55,000. And then I found a cash buyer, uh, long story short, signed it, made $20,000 my first deal. And literally the rest was history, man. I was a big introvert, but I found, I found the courage to do it. I, I don't know what happened, but I did it. And I made $20,000 and I literally just scaled up with bandit signs, started sticking more bandit signs out and the rest was history. So for those of you guys that are 17 years old right now, um, Zach just answered your question. You cannot legally 
purchase a property or sign an agreement until you're 18. So we're gonna talk about some ways to get around that. He just mentioned one of them, use your parents, right? Partner with your parents. But we'll talk about some of that as we go on because that should not stop you from taking action. There's a couple of things that you mentioned here and I'm, I'm sitting here taking down some notes. So a couple of interesting things that you talked about in a nutshell, mindset, right? You thought bigger, you thought bigger of yourself as you were cleaning toilets and uh, you were a bag boy uh, at, at your job, right? Your mindset made you believe that you were uh, worth more than what uh, you were doing at that time. So thinking big, thinking outside the box, that differentiated you from every other 17 year old who's not thinking about that, right? You had a mentor, whether you knew it or not, you had a Mr. Miyagi, right? Your dad, go figure it out on your own. Let me help you get this deal. Listen, you, you were able to listen to your father uh, as he got the deal. Uh, you, you learn how to not take the first offer. 60,000, I can't do that. Let me do 55,000, right? So these are all things that you watch your dad do and then you learn how to do it on your own. Investment, okay? You thought to yourself, I'm not, you know, I'm not making a lot of money. I'm making $100 a week, but I can invest that into marketing to get more leads. So these are all things, you know, you talked about taking action, you know, uh, you didn't think about it. You started, you had some skin in the game. You started investing your own money. So you had to take some action in order to get your money back, right? And patience, you know, we talked about patience a little bit where you are, uh, you know, again, going back to that negotiation tactic. I don't know if I could do 60, but I could do 55. That takes patience because you could have jumped on the first offer and would have made $5,000 less, but you created an additional $5,000 because of it. So mindset, mentor, mentorship, drive, investment, action, patience, all these are qualities of an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur. So if you're 17, 18, 19, 21, like Zach is right now, he's already made a lot of money in real estate at 21. You got to possess these qualities. You got to think outside the box, think bigger than where you are right now. If you're an adult listening to this right now, you need to, you need to listen to these, uh, these little uh, gems that Zach dropped on you. Because at the end of the day, some of you are lacking in, that, in these areas as well. And if you just follow these guidelines and you're willing to put in the work, there's nothing that you cannot accomplish. And Zach is living proof of it. So just kind of getting into the nitty gritty of this, what are some of the things that our listeners, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that the 17 and 18, maybe 21 year old crowd may have getting it, getting into, uh, getting started in real estate, man? Yeah, here's the biggest misconception. You're not going to watch this business if you act like an NBA or NFL player. And what I mean by that is if I you make $20,000 in a week, this is the best one I can think. So when you make $20,000 in a week, you can do one thing. You can go to Vegas, you can buy a Tesla, you can buy a Rolex, you can buy some, like, I don't know, you can buy some ice for you. Uh, but honestly, if you reinvest that in the business or you save it and invest it, it will go so far. The power of compound interest as a 17 year old kid, that money I invested at 17 years old, it's you'll make more money per year than at 50 making 100 grand a year. Yep. Your money goes so far, even a thousand dollars. Look it up a thousand dollars to be invested at 17 years old by the age of 70. That grows, that's almost a million bucks right there if you invest it right. But the biggest misconception is that the money will go forever, it's passive. You know, you can make a crazy good amount of money doing it um, just with no effort at all. I kind of got lucky my first month doing it. I know people that do well, but it took them nine months to get their first deal. Took me 13 months, man, at 21. Sure. You know, so definitely. And that was only a $1,500 check. It wasn't 20 grand, 25 grand, man, like yours. You know, definitely. That first check is, it changes the whole game for you. I'm telling you right now, I can tell you this thing works. You're, you could believe me, but until you actually physically have that check from that title company in your hand, you'll know your life has changed. And you have the destiny of your life. I'm going to be honest here. I don't want to get political, but 
a human life is not worth eight dollars an hour your value is what you can bring don't let anyone mm. tell you how much you're worth mm. make yourself I, that, that's the only thing i can tell you is I, I i was like i'm not worth eight bucks an hour i'll tell the market what i'm worth and it's over uh it, it's thousands of dollars per hour so I, I i made that shift honestly i'd probably be working maybe 10 bucks an hour here at, at, at the, as a bad boy if i never took action so the biggest misconception i can see is that you think it's really easy and not. The only reason I, I do so well now is I put my 1,000 hours in, not in wholesaling, but I, I've spent 1,000 hours just talking to sellers in real estate. That has changed the game to me. You can throw me anywhere in the United States. I can get a deal instantly. It's like being a basketball player. You take 1 million, one million uh, three-point shots, uh, you'll be in the NBA. Are you going to do it? That's the key. That's right, man. It, man, this... Listen, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite podcasts. Zach is dropping some gems, real life gems on each and every single one of you. I don't care if you're 18 or 80 at this point. These are gems. And this is stuff I wish somebody would have told me when I started at 21 years old. So basically what he's saying, if you didn't catch what, if you didn't catch what he said, I say it all the time. Uh, don't run after the shiny object syndrome, right? The money... Wholesaling is like having a high paying job. You want to create passive income streams. We'll talk about that, right? But don't run after the shiny objects. Everybody on Instagram has a Lamborghini and a Ferrari and a nice big house and they're on vacation and all kinds of other stuff. They're showing you what they want you to see, but you don't actually see what goes on behind the scenes. That's why I'm not a big fan of showing material things in my videos. I may once in a while, but it's, I'm not known for that. And I, I don't want to be known for that because I think that's deceiving, right? It took me 20 years to get, get some of the stuff that I have versus somebody just getting started and think they're going to have that in six months. That, that's not the case, right? It takes a lot of hard work. And I don't want you to think that uh, I'm going to get a $20,000 check and blow the whole check and then get another check. You're just starting a process all over again, right? What I want you to think is exactly what Zach said. Take that money and build a future, invest the money, and you'll be done a lot sooner. You can be done before you're 30 years old if you invest your money the right way. You can be done in real estate. Do you agree with me or not, Zach? Can you be done in real estate in three to five years? I don't know why someone would want to be done three to five years, but yeah. Absolutely. What are you going to do all day? Exactly. Smoke cigars and play golf? Like, you know, that's funny, man, because my, my initial, when I first started at 21, I, went, I wanted to be retired by the time I was 30. I started approaching 30. I said, there's no way I'm going to retire. I'm approaching 40 in a few months. And I'm like, I'm not, gonna, I was going to retire at 40. I said, there's no way. I just can't, I love this business so much. I love what I do. And then I love providing back, giving back to the community that I just can't see myself sitting down and doing nothing all day long. It'll drive me crazy. Well, know? here's the thing. Here's the thing. You got to think about entrepreneurs versus athletes. Gary Vee says this all the time. Do you physically think Michael Jordan would have stopped playing basketball if his body was in the nope. same shape as he is with 25? He'd just keep going. Yep. Here's the thing about being an entrepreneur in wholesaling is your body, like you're, sh you're shooting, you're, you're throwing like an NFL player. You don't have a body that gets worn down at the age of 40. You have a mind that goes for 80, 90, God willing, 100 years. So you literally have, you're like Michael Jordan, except you can go for hundreds of years. That is unbelievable. You're not an athlete. Actually, we're blessed that we're not athletes because if you told me I had 20 years only to wholesaling, I would be devastated. But you, you tell that to an athlete and they're so happy with it. You tell me I got, I got 80 years. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm going crazy. Yep, exactly, man. So we know that it wasn't an easy transition, in, uh, transition for you from 17 getting into the real estate business. We talked about some misconceptions that our listeners will look out, will need to look out for. Now, what are some of the obstacles that our listeners at 17, 18, maybe even 21, what are some things that they're, that, that they're going to face? There's obviously some obstacles out there, right? The hardest obstacle you're going to face is your friends and family at the age of 17 years old, just because mm -hmm. I have, I've had to make some sacrifices. Um, there's plenty of parties and stuff that, um, I was told, hey, why don't you come here? And I'm like, you know, I'm going to cold call for three hours. You know, I still, I, I mean, I, I was spent time with my friends and everything every week. 
But I mean, sometimes you got to make some sacrifices. I literally cold called in my, I had at a dorm room at, um, so I, I went to college for about four months. I got a full ride scholarship up like the biggest public school where I'm at. I went to full ride scholarship, decided I want to go to college. Um, they gave me a full ride. I got a, my two year degree already. So I went up North, um, went to school in my dorm room. I cold, I cold called five hours a day in my dorm room, virtually wholesaling in my home market. I decided I figured out I can actually go home and keep my university classes. I graduated in like 18 months, but I, I had so many opportunities where I could have gone out, had some great parties and stuff. I just had five hours cold calling schoolwork. That was it. And I made $100,000 in one semester wholesaling real estate virtually. Uh, that sacrifice, that $100,000 at the age of 18 will probably make me close to a million dollars in passive income for the rest of my life, starting at the age of like 60 or 50. So that sacrifice has... It's worth it, man. I, I can tell you right now, um, at 17, your friends or family, you're like, what are you doing? Like, this is like a scam. Like, stop, like, what do you do? Get a real job. I've had that told yeah. me so many times. I know most pe people's parents are going to tell them this. <laughs> My dad didn't, never told me that. My mom never told me that. But your parents are going to tell you that. Like, hey, when are you going to get a legit job? Like, when are you going to be an accountant, make $40,000 a year, work 60 hours a week, and, you know, put a suit and tie on? Yeah. Your parents are going to ask you that. My parents never asked me that, which probably really good for me, but that's going to be probably one of the biggest obstacles you're going to face is your friends and family. And they have the biggest influence on you. Unfortunately, um, I, I'd like to say that, you know, no one affects me. You can say anything bad about me and I won't really, like I get people DM me telling me I'm a clown and I'm, I'm a terrible person, whatever. That doesn't affect me. But when your parents or your family member says something, it's very influential on you. Um, so it's really tough. Um, that's probably the biggest obstacle I say that I faced, um, again, the, the toughest obstacles because just going to be grinding it out and putting a yeah. thousand hours in. Uh, but for me, that was not even an issue because I knew uh, once I made 20 grand, I was like, are you kidding me? Like that's three years of bag boy right there. So it's the mindset, man. That's right. That's right. I also quit my job uh, as a bag boy. So I had no other way to make money. So that kind of, uh, that kind of a little stressful, but you know, that, got me a little more motivated. Hey, am I going to play video games today or a uh, cold call? I don't have a job. Um, <laughs> the only way to make money is uh, actually doing it. And those are the biggest obstacles. Honestly, I, I could say you face is friends, family, and just getting through that grind. You got to be a tough work ethic. It's kind of cliche to say, but just think about it. It's a thousand hours. Clock it in. Yeah. All it takes. I think honestly, when I, when I'm sitting here thinking as, as I'm listening to you speak, um, what I would think would be an obstacle would be someone looking too young to purchase a property and is, is the property owner gonna take them seriously? I'm not sure if you ever came across anybody like that or maybe even, of course. you know, some, some of them will actually offer you, uh, uh, they'll, they'll give you the property just because of your drive. It happened to me when I was 21. That's how I got wow. my first deal in fact, right? But then I'm also thinking about, you know, um, you know, I think about me when I was in my 20s, I grinded. I didn't have fun in my 20s at all. I grinded from 21 to 30 years old. I literally worked 17, 18 hour days, man, uh, just grinding out and building my businesses. So I didn't have like I didn't enjoy, enjoy my 20s. But you got this. We talk about the shiny object syndrome, right? We got the young crowd. They, they want to party. They want to they want to have fun. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Though, like Zach said, make the sacrifice now so that you won't have to make the sacrifice later. Then I, I think about uh, the younger crowd. What, what do they call them? Like, not the millennials. What are they like? Gen Z or something like that. They yeah. are more entrepreneurial mind. Uh, they are they they are more entrepreneurial minded. At the end of the day, um, their their use of technology is changing the game. So you guys really have what it takes already. You just have to be willing to get out there and uh, crush this real estate thing at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So, so what are some things that newbies should be mindful of uh, moving forward? Definitely. So here, here, here's two things why, so I just wanted to get this point out, but um, this is a huge plus that not a lot of people know. Jamel probably doesn't, I mean, you probably did, but uh, eventually I think I probably would maybe get married, have kids. Um, and I've seen a lot of my friends who've had fathers and, and moms that work full time and, you know, they're 40, 50 years old. And this is literally what life is. Kids go to school, 
uh, dad comes in at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and he works. He has to leave at uh, 9 and he can't go to any sporting events, spend any time with the kids because he's out working all the time and he's super stressed. It's like, ah, ah, ah. Um, you see a guy like Jamel. Um, I don't know his family life like exactly, but um, I think if his daughter like wanted him to go to a recital or something like at 2 p.m., he's there. Yeah. Like he, he has the time because of the sacrifice he made in the beginning where he could spend time with his kids. Now, I don't have kids. Uh, but I know probably when I'm, if I have kids, that's probably one of the most important things out there. So I, I made the sacrifice, say, hey, right. with working hard in my 20s, having fun with the boys is all cool. But how much more fun would it be to have spent quality time with my kids um, at the age of 30, 40, and 50? So that's the sacrifice I chose, um, sacrificing five years for you know, 50, 60 years with my kids. So um, that's the one big plus. I don't think a lot of like, guys my age learn because they think about the short term all the time. But um, what was your question again? Sorry, I just had to get that oh, So, in. So, you know, what are, we talked about sacrifice. What are some of the things that oh, yeah. they should be mindful of then, you know, moving yeah, forward? So, yeah, so the one thing you got to be mindful of in these appointments is you got to think of this. There's competition. I know everyone says collaboration over competition and competition is not real. Competition is real. There is, Mark Cuban says, you got to act like someone is literally trying to take everything away from you every single day, a competitor. And there was about, I would say 12 wholesalers that follow me. They literally try to take my whole business away from me and they want me on the streets. Uh, so I work hard enough where I know that. So when I go to an appointment and see a seller, you got to think this, there's about four or 40 year old people there. There's a guy with a big beard. There's seven year old people like still going on wholesaling appointments. And then you got me. I'm definitely the youngest crowd there. What are you going to do when there's five of those people that go on the appointment and you're the last guy? How are you going to be different? Because as you said, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young kid. How are you going to close this deal when you got all these other people going around me? So my first couple of deals, I was 18 years old. Um, got a little more facial hair now, but I, I squeak your voice a lot. I, w I wish you knew me like four years ago. It was like high pitched. It was, oh my God. So a lot of people so think you, hey, I'm you too actually, young. You, you put some bass in your voice since then, huh? <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but really, the, the difference is, I was, oh my gosh, I can't tell you. If you go to the appointment and you're like, oh, maybe the seller thinks I'm too young, maybe not work. And if you have that mindset, like maybe I'm not going to be the best and I just act like that. What's the difference between a 50 year old and me going in? If, if you're 50 with the same mindset as a 17 year old, like the seller's not going to like me. You're going to go there and say, hey, how's it going? You're just going to look around. You're not really going to know it much about. You know, you're just going to act like you don't know a lot and you're not going to probably get the deal. I walk in there at 18 years old. I remember I'm like, hi, how's it going? My name's Zach and I know this market so well. I can't wait to help you out. Complete confidence, convic conviction that I'm going to get to this deal. Mm. There's nothing else going to stop me. And this is a little ignorance. Um, you got to have a crazy ego uh, when going to these appointments. I don't have an ego personally, but when I'm on an appointment, I know everything about real estate. <laughs> There's nobody that knows more than, about me than real estate. There's nobody that's better than me at going on appointments and I'm their best friend. And it, it works really well. If you go in there as a friend that knows everything about real estate, that is literally the most confident person out there, people sense it. And look at people straight in the eyes and talk with convention, conviction. And uh, it, it's, the, it's the best. I mean, Sellers are giving me twenty thousand dollar deals at eighteen years old. Why? It's because I know how to talk to them, and I'm very confident. That's right. And you said you put in that time. You know, I'm sure you weren't like that on the first call, on the first, nope. on the first appointment. It takes time. You're gonna fall on your face, guys. The, the the key thing is not to be afraid to make the mistakes. Improve, get better every single time, every single appointment, every single phone call you make. You should be looking to improve your quality and improve what you bring to the table and be confident. Like Zach said, you know, at the end of the day, if you're confident, the only way that you can really truly be confident is through experience and knowledge. You're gaining the knowledge through these podcasts and through my YouTube videos. And you can we'll talk about how you can get in contact with Zach as well, but you have to apply this stuff. It's, it's not going to, it's not going to benefit you if you don't do. And that's exactly what Zach did. You know, he went out there and he did, and the results speak for themselves, uh, you know, and, and obviously he's successful today. Let me ask you a question, Zach. 
most 17, 18, 19 year olds, they don't have a lot of money. They don't have any credit, right? If they do have any credit, it's because they just enrolled in college and all of the colleges are sending them, sending them credit cards. It happened to me. What do you say to that crowd that they don't have any money? They're just getting out of school. What do, what do you say to that crowd? Do they need money? Do they need credit to do this? Well, I, I never had a credit score till last year. <laughs> um, I, I got my first credit score at 20 years old wow. just because I, I didn't know. I never went to get in debt. I, I right. religiously listened to Dave Ramsey. Um, I learned about 3.5% FHA loan. And I probably want to buy a couple. I can buy a duplex with that. So, but, but hey. let, me, let me stop you there. You said something else. You listen to financial podcasts. You listen to... Uh, you're listening to books, you're reading books, you're educating yourself. Most people are not doing that. So you're getting your education, even though you, you, um, did you finish college? Oh yeah. I got my bachelor's last year. So you got your bachelor's, but are you using it? Are you using what you went to college for? Like, are you, I, no. I'm not going to cuss on this podcast, but I didn't learn squat. That's my at point, all. Right. But you're using the information that you're pulling in from these different sources. So you guys are doing the same thing in a sense, right? You're listening to these podcasts, watching these videos, but you have to apply. That it, 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 it comes full circle all the time. You have to apply. And I didn't mean to cut you off, man. What were you saying? No, I, mean, I didn't even have a high school diploma when I got my first deal. It doesn't matter. That's right. That's <laughs> right, man. It, it doesn't matter. So you don't need cash. You don't need credit. You don't need any of that stuff. You need a you need a will and you need a way. You have your you have if you have the willpower, the way is right here, right? You have the information. You just got to go again. You hear me say it? You, I've been saying it a lot throughout this podcast. Just do. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. All right. And if you if you make a mistake, come to me. Say hey, you know, can you create a video on this? Or can I ask you this? And I'll create a, a, a video for you answering your questions. It's not a problem at all. Right. You're helping me to help you at that point. So I want to provide this, this younger generation with a, maybe a five-step process to go from where they are right now to where they want to go. What would you say to the younger generation step-by-step? Step? Let's say step one, step two, step three, so on and so forth to uh, getting started into getting their first deal. Yeah, so when I had a flip of the rick, I had maybe 50 subscribers and I reached out to Jamel to go on my podcast. And I, I always ask one question at the end of it. Um, luckily, I got more now. But I asked Jamel this. Like, he came on my podcast. I was like, no one knew exactly who I was. But he's like, yeah, sure, I'll go on it. And that, that changed a lot for my channel. But thank you for that. But I asked the same question to every single person. I say, Is that, I say Jamel, I asked him this question. What would you do if you were in my shoes at 17? You got 300 bucks in your bank account. You know, it's 2020 now or 2019 back then. But it was 2019. What would you do to become the next Jamel Gibbs? And th those questions, you, you answer the question very well. Um, everyone has a different answer for it. Uh, but I've never really been asked that. So if I had 300 bucks in my bank account back in 2020 uh, till now, I would not do bandit signs. And so don't do bandit signs. How do you get the band? How do you get the $300? Do you borrow it from somebody? Do you go pack bags? Do you get a job, save up the 300? How do you get it? You, you, I mean, I do deals without spending a zero zero dollars in marketing, but that's from JV deals. But I would say at least three hundred bucks. Like, come on, mm -hmm. like, who needs three hundred bucks? Go go find get a, a job. Get Just find a way to get it. Like, come on. Yeah. There's, I mean, for someone to make a hundred thousand dollars a year a year as a doctor, they have to spend what seven years and two hundred grand uh, in medical school or more, and or more, and uh, three hundred bucks. Come on. So anyone could probably get 300 bucks. I mean, I, I mean, the way minimum wage now is insane. It's like 10 bucks an hour here in Florida now. New laws right. pass. So you can make it pretty quick, uh, maybe two weeks, get 300 bucks. I would not do bandit signs. Bandit signs don't really work anymore. I feel like an old man saying this, uh, but they worked four years ago. They don't work, in, they don't work anymore. Uh, I would say, uh, depending on 300 bucks, we'll keep it that. I would literally spend $100 on Zen Call or Mojo Dialer. I got 200 bucks left in my bank account. That 200 bucks I'll use for my bank account will literally be me spending, driving for dollars on gas money, which should last me a very long time. I'll drive till the, the pedals are worn out. So what I would do is I would cold call and do driving for dollars. And I would spend zero in skip tracing. Now I'm gonna show you a little secret here. Um, 
So if you go to if you go to your local county's you know property appraiser, actually three hundred bucks. Think about now, hundred bucks for gas. I'll spend a hundred bucks in prop stream because it'd be a little easier. And then I'll just do hundred hundred bucks in gas, hundred in prop stream, and then hundred for Mojo. Mm -hmm. So the, that gives you driving for dollars. So prop stream just lets you. I, I don't think you're affiliated with prop stream. I, I mean, I am, but no. But propstream.com, you can pull ten thousand high equity lists anywhere in the country except for South Carolina. And you can do it from there. 10,000 high equity list, cheapest you're going to get. Uh, so it's, I'd probably do 10,000 of high equity in my city. I would cold call that. And I would cold call 10,000. Should be pretty good for a month. And then go from there. Should definitely get your first deal. It takes about 3,000 cold calls for me to get a deal. Uh, and the way you should do that, uh, when you're pulling the list, uh, you got to skip trace it. Go to truepeoplesearch.com and manually skip trace for free because you got plenty of time on your hands. And you'll get free phone numbers. And then you just put that in the uh, dialer call. That's it, man. Uh, marketing on a budget. I have a video on YouTube. Uh, this video is actually starting to take off. It's starting with $500. But you can apply the same thing Zach is talking about with $300 as well. Um, fantastic, man. Step by step. And, you know, the most important part of all of that is to do. Again, do, do, do. Don't be afraid to fail forward. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just do, figure it out as you go on. You will win and you will learn from your mistakes and eventually you'll end up in a much better situation than you're in right now. If this is what you really want, you know, in two, three years, when you're 20, if you're 17 now, when you're 20 years old, you're going to be laughing. Zach is an expert now at 21, right? He knows exactly what he's doing. He's made six figures his first year while he's in high school, in the business, right? So, I mean, that says a lot. Anybody can do this. You just have to be willing to apply what we talk about on these trainings. Now, Zach, you know, obviously we have a lot of, there's a lot that we could talk about today. I'm talking, you know, I, I specifically wanted to get you on this. I contacted you last week. I said, I'm getting a lot of uh, younger uh, generation uh, individuals contacting me I need, I need to get you on a call. You willingly came on this call. I appreciate you for that, man. And on this call, we're talking to my nephews. We're talking to, you know, my cousins, my, my little cousins. My, we're talking to my, my daughter who at 14 years old, she cast her first $13,000 check. Obviously, I had to help her get there. But we're talking to the younger generation. And I truly believe that the younger generation is the future of this business. And we have to feed them what we know in order to keep this real estate investing train moving, man. This is a movement. This is a, this is a community that we have in a real estate investing world. And we're here to help each other, right? So with that being said, they're going to want more information. How can they get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. So if you just go to uh, Flip With Rick on YouTube, I go live every week. I got amazing people like Jamel on. I always vet them real quick uh, before they go on. And they kind of share the same thing I'm kind of sharing. I'm, I share exactly my business, how I do it, exactly what I do, I dissect it. I do that every Friday. I basically just answer a Q and A. You can literally get in a Zoom with me and I'll talk to you face to face with thousands of other people. But um, I do that. I have a Facebook group where it's, um, it's a real estate mastermind, but it's free. Um, it's wholesaling houses for real, but that's really it. I mean, I just give value. I, I don't like selling courses. I don't do much of that stuff, but if I can just help people, when I started out, um, I think Jamel has YouTube uh, before I started, but I never found him. There's When I looked, I couldn't find one person that did it, did the stuff for free. Jamel's doing it. It's unbelievable the stuff he's doing. If I if I found his channel four years ago, I would probably be, my net worth probably have doubled, but uh, that, that's not here for later. But um, I, I just really appreciate you uh, having me on. Man, it's been, it's been a real pleasure, man. And, and I love the fact that you were able to talk to that to that particular crowd not saying that you're 18 anymore. Uh, I know you're a little older than that, but you fit right into that generation, man. And you're living proof that it actually works if they just if they just apply. So I appreciate you for that, man. Hey, are, are you reading any books right now? Uh, not really. Not really? Not no, right I don't, re I don't re re read too much. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. I go running about every single day. And I'll listen to a, probably a sales, sales podcast business podcast and then the news one um but i, I mean i listen to wholesaling podcasts all the time 
Uh, that's it. I, I listen to podcasts more and more just because of what I do. The only real free time I get is when I'm in a car or running or working out and put my ear and go. But um, no, that's really it. Not much books. I mean, audio books, but they're not really reading. Cool, cool, man. And what uh, what audio book would you recommend for the, the 17, 18 year old crowd right now? I would say Unleash the Power Within by Tony Robbins. Love that, man. I love it. And then The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver and Unleash the Power Within. I'll definitely link those in the description box and the show notes of this, uh, this episode as well, man. And any last words for our listeners? Yeah, it's one thing I can think of here. Um, life is too short, man. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I feel like I'm nine years old saying this, but you talk to anyone, life is too short. And if you realize you only have a certain amount of life to live. And at the age of 20, what do I got? 80 years left? If I have this 80 years left, what should I be spending that? Should I be spending that time doing something that I absolutely love with my family, with my kids? Or should I be doing that building someone else's dreams? Mm. Once you realize how lucky you are to be alive as a human being, you don't want to waste a second of that. Do you want to waste a second of that being in a cubicle, miserable? I don't. Um, wholesaling real estate is the same thing as maybe playing video games for a lot of you guys thinking about it. You think to yourself, hey, wouldn't it be so cool to be like Michael Jordan doing what I love or being like Ninja Twitch streamer playing video games. Making $20,000 on a wholesaling deal is my video game. I don't think I work at all. I literally just play a game. The game is business. It's mm. the greatest sport on earth. And that's what I do. I wake up every single day ecstatic and happy. Um, I got full of energy because I just love what I'm doing. You can do the same thing in your business. I promise you, you'll have a passion for wholesaling once you get your first deal and you figure out how fun it is. Uh, so really, that's it, man. Life is short. Do what you enjoy. Change your life forever. If you just spend one year dedicating to wholesaling, and if you work hard enough, you will get your first deal. Remember, it's one year for the rest of your life you can do to change your trajectory of everything. This is a 21-year-old speaking wise words. Guys, you, you heard it from, from Zach himself. He's within your age bracket. He's doing it. You can do this as well. I was inspired by this, man. And I know you guys are, are, are inspired. I don't care if you're, like I said, 18 or 80, you should be inspired by this. And you should be willing to get out there because if Zach could do it, anybody can do it. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this episode. If you want us to have Zach back on, uh, we can talk about a different topic or talk about what he's doing in his business. Let me know. Leave a comment and uh, we'll talk to you guys on the next one.